Hello everybody, you're very welcome to this episode of Object Oriented Programming. In this episode we're going to continue on looking at how objects are implemented in Python. So we'll just look at two things. First we'll look at how to initialize an object and then we'll look at how to document an object well. So in terms of initializing an object, what do I mean by that? Well let's think of the following case. Let's say I declared a variable of type point and uh, I declared it and called it P1 or more technically, I instantiated an object called P1, and then I said P1.x is 5. And then I printed out P1x, P1y is P1.x, P1.y. You will notice I've forgotten to do something here. I've forgotten to give P1.y a value. So y has no value. So what will happen if I run this on my trusty computer? It will explode. It will not be happy with it. It will say, it will give a big long error message like this at the command prompt. Bottom line, and we read the bottom line, it says attribute error point object has no attribute y. So we can't be printing out a value for y because we didn't declare p1 with the value y. So if we leave out, when we declare a particular class or an object and it has a bunch of attributes, we have to give values to those attributes or declare them at least. Otherwise, we can't do anything with them and it causes problems, which is a pity. So what we should do is try and force the developers to give values to every variable within an object. So we can create a special kind of method that forces the programmers to initialize all the attributes with some starting value, just so that we don't have this crash. We call that an initialization method, so it's a method a program, but a special kind of method called an initialization one. In Python, um, that has a special name, and the initialization methods for every class are called underscore, underscore, in, it, underscore, underscore, open bracket, close bracket. I, I, like, I definitely think the Python developers sat around for hours thinking of a really catchy, groovy name, and then we ended up with this instead. So. If, I, if we want to see what that looks like, we'll take our point class again, and now we've created an initialization. And the initialization says there are two variables in each object of this type, point, x and y, and let's just put some value into x and y. That's all it says. So let's put some values in. So when you create an object of this class, what it's saying is you have to put in values for x and y or you'll get a problem. Not that you'll get an error, but you'll get a problem, definitely. So when we, if we don't have an initialization method in, we can just declare points or variables or objects of type point by saying p1 gets point, p2 gets point. But when we do have an initialization method, it will force us to say for p1, when we declare it, we have to give values to the x and y, so we have to say point 6 comma 5, and p2 has to get values 2 comma 2. Your program won't even compile if you have these um, declarations in the code if you have an initialization method. So all the initialization method it says is put values into all the attributes before we start, because if you don't declare them and put values in them, somebody might be using it and it could explode and blow, blow up or something like that. So. With that underscore underscore i n i t underscore underscore, when we declare an object of class point, we must put values in to the point. So you can see on the top, without, we could just do open bracket, close bracket. But with this i n i t thing, we have to put in values for x and y for every point we create, or the computer will sprout legs, sprout an arm, punch us in the face, and say, Stop doing that. Which is great, because I think otherwise programmers would lose the run of themselves a bit. If we're very, very lazy though, there's a little trick we can do. If we don't, if we do, if we don't declare the values, we will get a crash and it'll say, look, there's no, we have an I and IT method and you've declared it, but there's X and Y have no values in it. So if we try and just declare P assign point, it's not going to work. We have to put in values for a point. If we want to be very lazy, we can do the following. We can declare our method i and it and say that x gets the value 0 and y gets the value 0 going into it. So then that saves us a lot of hassle. So then what that's saying is 
when we declare this method, x and y are going to get the values 0 and 0, which is lazy. So that means if I, if I declare my initialization method like this, I can do it either way. If I declare p1 as being point, then it's going to put 0 and 0 into x and y. But if I declare p2 as being point 2 comma 2, it'll put 2 and 2 in x and y. So that's neat. So when we um, put default values into the initialization, that saves us a bit of hassle. But it, it goes, makes for inconsistent programming. Personally, when I'm declaring classes or objects of a class, I like to put in all the values for the attributes within the class, just so that I know what values are in it. Because if I, if I don't put values in, then I don't know what's going to be at that memory location. So if we don't supply the values, 0, 0 goes in, but if we do, the object is created with those values, 2, 2. One other point and then we're done. This is about documentation of our methods within a class. Python is considered by many one of the most easy programming languages to read. You may disagree, but nonetheless, whether it's easy to read or not easy to read, Object reuse is considered paramount within the object-orientated design framework. So if we can give a one-line explanation of what each method does, it's more likely to encourage people to reuse our objects in different programs. So if I've got a fancy object that does the theorem of Pythagoras already, and somebody else wants to write the theorem of Pythagoras, instead of them having to do it, they just call my calc distance object, and then it's done for them. To help them out a little bit, if I put a one-liner explaining what calc distance does, that's much easier for them. So in Python, um, it uses something called doc strings, which means if I put a string in a single quote or double quotes, just after I declare a class or method, that information will become visible when I look for help on that object. If I want to put a few sentences in, I need to put in three single quotes or three double quotes. And, and we'll see examples of that later. So if I declare a class point, and then I just put in double quotes afterwards, represents a point in 2D space. I'm telling you what the class does, it represents a point in 2D space. For the initialization method, I have a, a, a single line in which says, initialize the position of a new point, because that's what that method does. For the method called move, it says move the point to a new location, and the location is AB. And then for reset, it says reset the point back to the origin, 0, 0. So then if I go into, if I run our program and then I type in help, give me help on the class called point, tell me what I've got in point, what it'll give me is this, it'll say the class point represents a point in 2D space. We have three methods, calc dist, which is to get the distance between two points. We have move, which is to move the point to a new location. And we've reset, that resets the point back to the origin. So this is very handy. So if I've got a library of 10,000 classes and 100,000 methods within each of those classes, for each class, all I have to do is go help that class name and it'll tell me all the methods that are in that class and what they do. And then again, as I said, if I'm looking for a method to reset a point back to the origin, I don't need to read one. All I need to do is say point.reset, and then that'll work for me because that's a method within the point class. So I hope that makes sense. And if it doesn't, go and run the programs. It's over to you now. Thanks very much. We'll see you on the next episode.